Yavapai Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers and Cliff Castle Casino. Here's Cottonwood Mayor Diane Jones. Hello. Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, and today we're going to talk about the Cottonwood Police Citizen Academy. And they call it Citizen Academy, so I'm going to stick with that. And um, I'm a graduate, I'm a recent graduate of this program, and it was so interesting that I wanted to bring it to the citizens of Cottonwood and citizens of the Upper Verde Valley and share with them opportunities that they could also take advantage of. And we have with us today Sergeant Garth Braxton, who is the main instructor for this program. Welcome, Sergeant Thank Braxton. And we have also with us um, Robert Janica. Mm -hmm. And Robert is here as a citizen, but he also, in his, his free time, or his spare time, he is the director of security for the Verde Valley Medical Center. So I believe that as a classmate of yours that you found this program as interesting as I did. Do you want to share a little bit of, of your thoughts on the program? Oh, absolutely. Um, being in the field for numerous years myself, it was nice to just uh, kind of re-see and rethink and see what the officers do every day. Um, and I know a lot of our other classmates uh, that didn't have any prior experience or anything were, were really shocked on how much responsibility our officers do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think it was a good overview for them. Absolutely. I found uh, the class lasted for what, 10 weeks? Is, is it two and, two and a half months Correct. that it lasts? And, and for me as mayor, it was really a commitment on time. And I was like, I want to do this. You know, I want to learn about our police department and I can do this. Yes, I'll go. <laughs> and so I put in my application and Sergeant Braxton accepted me and I became a student of the police department. So um, I want to talk a little bit, you know, the time just flies by in this class. I mean, you get there at 7 and it's already 9 o'clock and you're like, wow, that was fast. It is so interesting. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that we talked about, um, well, let's just go through and talk about some of the things that the public can learn about through this class. And we met so many of the officers that would come in. We met officers from the 911 uh, communications group. We met, uh, well, not officers, but em I guess employees from that division. Sure. Uh, we met. We learned about the K9 uh, officers. They would come in and show us, you know, their work. Uh, so go ahead, Sergeant Braxton, and just share a little bit of information about what you're teaching citizens when you hold these classes. Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, we are instructors, but we're also students as well because when we start the program, a lot of times uh, the citizens may not recognize all of the officers that we have working for our department. So we initially start off with introductions from our command staff, which includes uh, Chief Jody Fanning along with Commander Gary Isinga and Commander Jody McCooch. And we introduce uh, them as well as the students and uh, we get an opportunity to interact with the uh, students and learn where their backgrounds are and where they come from. And that gives us insight because you know, a lot of times people think that we're a small community, but there's a lot of experience, a lot of diversity, especially for a town this size. And it really benefits us to see the different experiences that people have and where they come from, because regardless of where you are at, everybody comes from a different background and they have a different perspective on, you know, the police or the sheriff or uh, places where they've come from in the past. So. Um, when we start the academy, it really You're kind of like psychologist too then, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I mean, it, it really does transition um, from the introductions and into some of the topics you mentioned, like canine uh, positions, motor officers, narcotic investigations, even uh, computer online investigations. Um, I, so found, I found I that really fascinating and uh, yeah. we get a list of where where our police officers do research on on criminal activity and and it's just amazing the free um, websites and the free 
um, resources that that you can find information out. You know that when you need to find out things about criminal activity. So it it was just so interesting. So um, go ahead and let's talk about. Um, patrol pr procedures. You had officers come in and you had them teaching us. We had a class of what, about about 15? Yes, okay. uh, it's actually 16 that 16? Uh, graduated. Okay. And so there were 16 of us learning all of this. So patrol procedures, you had officers come in and I remember you asking we students, you know, about what do you expect when you see an officer, you know, come up to your car or an officer in the community? Mm -hmm. And that was a learning experience. And so what do you expect as in your job? And go ahead and tell us what your job is. We didn't we didn't share sure. that. <laughs> um, well, I've, my primary function is a professional standards sergeant, mm -hmm. which handles all internal and external complaints that are generated from either inside the police department against police employees or that are uh, brought up from uh, outside of the department. Along with that, I also serve as the public information officer responsible for media releases and uh, updates to the community about ongoings in the de police department and uh, other right. activities. And citizens will see your name quite frequently in newspaper articles. I mean, when there's been a criminal activity that sure. you need to get information out to the public, you're the person that researches that, writes the article, and gets it to the press so that the public will know about it too. Correct. All exactly. right. And so, patrol procedures. I mean, that was really yes. interesting to me. You know, I mean, what do you expect? in leadership in the police department of your patrol officers? Well, first and foremost, uh, we expect our officers to be professional. Um, we expect them to strive for excellence, um, to have integrity in their work, and to be knowledgeable and competent. Um, I think that's no different from any community that you would see throughout the country. Uh, that's something that we push, we're passionate about, and um, we take very seriously. When we talk about patrol procedures, a lot of times when police officers show up and we have contact with the citizens, it's not a pleasant experience. Usually when people call us, they're in times of crisis, either they've been a victim, they've been a witness to something serious, or potentially they're a suspect. And so we wanna make sure that as much as we can, we can educate people that they're aware of why we're doing what we're doing, how we're doing it, and um, and I think that that serves the biggest impact uh, with respect to that class because a lot of times people think that police officers are standoffish or they have uh, this persona or demeanor about them and that specific class gives the citizens the reasons why and the reasons that uh, we do certain things and it's just the backbone of uh, what the academy is about because those are who the police are citizens have contact with the majority of the time are the people dressed like I am mm -hmm. today. So, Right, I know that by the end of the class, I mean our classmates, Robert, were saying, you know, they had a whole new respect for police officers and the kinds of challenges that they meet every day. What was your favorite thing about the class, Robert? Well, it's, a, it's kind of, it's hard to pinpoint one thing. Um, it is. <laughs> but I would have to say, you know, if I have to lean towards one thing, I was definitely into it as technology is changing so fast. And our community is like, it, it, it's hard to know and there's a lot of scams that come through on the internet and stuff. I think that was my favorite because probably I didn't know much about that as mm -hmm. much as I would know maybe some of the other things or have an idea. So that was really enlightening. Uh, I thought, I, I was really astounded to learn that, you know, people are going to cell phones now rather, and they're getting rid of their landlines. Mm -hmm. And when you call emergency services yeah. and you have a landline, they can, even if you pass out after you call 911, they can find you True. and help you. But yeah. if you have a cell phone, that isn't always possible anymore. And then the new computer-generated phone companies, it's not always possible. So our communications and 911 department is, you know, sometimes struggles to find that person or that individual to get them help. True. And so that's something, how can a citizen, you know, what should they be thinking about and what is, what should they do about this to ensure that, um, that help, can, help will come when they need it? 
and you know, one of the things that we talked about in uh, you know a specific class about online investigations is layering, and the more informed you can be, the better off you're going to be, uh, and that comes with um, the fact that maybe it's something you may not want to do um, is go away from your landline. Maybe you want to have both. Maybe you have a landline and a cell phone. Obviously, for safety reasons, if you're going to be uh, going away for an extended period of time or um, doing something um, that you don't normally do, you want to let somebody know where you're going. And so the more you can insulate yourself around um, you know, the potential for um, violence or uh, danger, the better off you're going to be. So it's just a matter of being informed and being insulated against, um, you know, what could be. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that we're going to take a little break right now and be right back in one minute. This is Mayor Diane Jones with Inside Cottonwood. Meet the team at Arizona Smile Designers, offering complete comprehensive, restorative, and aesthetic dentistry. Dr. Vergara and Dr. Lord specialize in dental health, implants, and cosmetic dental procedures. Expert staff and state-of-the-art equipment bring forth the most from your smile. Dr. Ripplinger conveniently comes to Arizona Smile Designers for oral surgery and complicated procedures. Visit Arizona Smile Designers at 350 South Willard in Cottonwood. Insurance and new patients are welcome. Call 634-8610. When you visit Cliff Castle Casino Hotel, you'll find four unique dining options, including Storytellers, your fine dining steakhouse, a special setting capturing the spirit of ancient Indian dwellings. The menu features award-winning cuisine, including juicy steaks, fresh seafood, an extensive wine list including local Verde Valley varieties and scrumptious desserts. An upscale yet casual setting for intimate elegance. Storyteller Steakhouse at Cliff Castle Casino Hotel, the Sedona Verde Valley entertainment destination. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones and with me today are Sergeant Garth Braxton and Robert Janica, a citizen who just graduated from the Cottonwood Citizen Police Academy. So we were just talking about some of the things that we learned as citizens. If a citizen would like, if they get interested in this and someone hears this program and they want to join the next class, what do they do and when might that be? Well, first of all, we hope that uh, a lot of people join the class and a lot of people are interested. Uh, and first, I want to thank you for uh, having this uh, as a segment. But if they're interested, one of the nice things about uh, the program is we don't limit it just to citizens of Cottonwood. We think mm -hmm. that uh, if there's a time of crisis or a time of need, if you see a police officer, you expect them to uh, uh, give you services and the services that you expect. But uh, we've expanded it out, um, so if you live within the Verde Valley region or you work in the Verde Valley region, um, you're eligible to apply. It's an um, application that uh, is available online or at the Cottonwood Police Department. Uh, we run a simple background check and um, we notify you um, in writing and by email if you're accepted into the program. Uh, some of the requirements are that you be 18 years or older. Um, mm -hmm and not have any current uh, criminal uh, case pending against you. And uh, that you're interested in learning more about the department. And our next class is scheduled uh, for the fall of 2012. Okay, so um, the fall of 2012. But they could apply now or should they wait? They can so apply now. They can Absolutely. apply now. So you can, you'll have your list of sure. potential students. I think that's a good point that you just mentioned is that the city of Cottonwood works regionally in every every arena that we sure. serve people. And you know, once in a while you hear, hear someone from outside the city say, well, you know, uh, the Cottonwood police just work inside the city, but when you consider that there's uh, 40,000 people a day going past the Safeway corner, um, all of the people who come into the city for to go to the hospital, go to their doctor, come to shop or do their business, um, Cottonwood Police Department is impacted by that kind of volume of, of, 
folks inside the community. Mm -hmm. So it, the Cottonwood Police Department does serve everyone who comes to the area uh, to do their business. So you really do serve a lot more. And also, mm -hmm. if you're called by the county sheriff or Clarkdale Police or Jerome Police or anyone else, um, from my understanding, the Cottonwood Police Department is always there to help. Absolutely, as they are with us. And uh, we've been really fortunate, at least in the time that I've been here, that uh, we have really good working relationships with uh, not only other law enforcement area or agencies, as you mentioned, but also other entities, um, such as the Verde Valley Medical Center, um, private and uh, uh, businesses and other uh, companies. So. You know, you're exactly right. We do um, share those relationships, and uh, it's important that we get the message out that um, we're not just the city of Cottonwood, we're law enforcement. We have a partnership with Absolutely. everyone. Absolutely. That's great. And I'm so glad that, that you have that mindset in the police department that we're there to serve everyone and we're there to work with the other departments and, <laughs> and the hospital, which is very important to the city of Cottonwood. And the Verde Valley Medical Center is, is um, just so important to the citizens of our community. So thinking about maybe your next favorite thing that we learned about, Robert, share a little bit more. Well, <laughs> it's a test. Being an avid hunter <laughs> and an outdoors guy, I like to do things. The SWAT uh, with Sergeant Savage was, was very interesting. It's always nice to see new techniques or new ways they do things or breach things or surveillance things. Um, I think that segment was, was very interesting. Very interesting. I learned a lot and, about yeah, that. Very informative. A lot of new technologies mm -hmm. that are used today and um, le lethal type of things that they do. So I was uh, Yeah, in the impressed. class we got to see the equipment that they use yeah. in an incident and uh, their techniques were very interesting, yes. and then hearing about um, the the folks, what are they called now, remind me, Sergeant Braxton, the people that go in before them to try to, the communicators? Negotiators. Negotiators, yes. thank you, the negotiators. Mm -hmm. How all of that works together is just pretty amazing, and you know, occasionally you'll get an incident where a citizen is suicidal, or he's mm -hmm. uh, he or she is distraught, uh, you have domestic violence um, challenges sometimes that you have to get involved with. Mm -hmm. So it's just all of that and you know how do we protect our officers and keep them safe mm -hmm. and make sure they get home to their families. You know it's, um, as a mayor I mean I'm just so grateful that there are people in our society who will study and train in these occupations and you know they miss Christmas with their kids and they miss birthdays with their kids and their families they, because they're serving the public. And somebody's got to be there on Christmas and Thanksgiving, and they are, and they're there for us. So I just want to say how much I appreciate the quality of individual that goes into this occupation. And, you know, I mean, as we've seen in so many instances, you come to work and, you know, there's no promise that you're going to go home. Sure. And so I admire the dedication and the work that you do, you know, a lot. And I want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you. So something else that, um, that was really interesting to me was the school youth programs. Mm -hmm. And I know that the state has defunded essentially the, the um, programs where we go into the schools, mm -hmm. which are called the school resource officers. school resource officers, but uh, Chief Fanning and the city manager discussed that, and you know decided with decided that you know we really need that officer in these schools. So as I understand it, we have an officer who is trying to do it all, <laughs> but yes. the city went ahead and you know basically funded having these officers in school because it is just so important whether the state funds it or not having that officer in the school um, it's just something that's very needed uh, for quality of life in our community and for our children and so do you want to explain a little bit about the school resource resource officer and I know that you served in that capacity at one time so sure. you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I have some experience but uh, one of the 
main reasons that uh, you have a, a police officer in the school is for education. Mm -hmm. And the sooner that you can um, get the youth exposed to police officers in a positive setting, the better chance that you have of directing them down the right path as opposed to later down in uh, down the road or in life. And so when I served there, uh, one of the biggest uh, pushes was to be inside the classrooms and to teach programs such as criminal justice and uh, teen court, other programs that were directed at uh, uh, getting people actively involved in criminal justice related activities and exposing them to what it is law enforcement is about. The other factor is uh, it just serves as a resource um, and it's a way that the students get to meet a police officer on a first name basis. They see him every day. They see him walking amongst them in the classrooms. They see him instructing in classes and um, basically helping them with different situations that arise. And it's not always about law enforcement or a crime that's been committed because that's only a small fraction of what their actual job is. And so we've been really fortunate to have uh, Officer Del Monday up in the school uh, this year. And as you mentioned, he's being pulled in a couple different directions, which is a task in and of itself. Um, but he's doing an outstanding job. And um, we're just fortunate that this program has been able to continue at this point. Do you think that the state will fund this again? Or do you think that the city's just going to have to make a decision uh, on its importance and I mean I guess guess you probably wouldn't know that answered but I'm just wondering myself if that's something that with the state budget that that we might not see those funds come back it's the hope that mm -hmm. uh, it comes back but at this point I'm not sure whether yeah, it will or not there's no promises sure but I do think it's a very important part of the police program, so I'm hoping that we can continue to fund it and, mm. and see our officers there for our children in our schools. So right now, we're going to just stop a minute. <laughs> the time is flying by. There's so much information to share, but we're going to take another break for a commercial. The sky's the limit at Stargazer Pavilion, Northern Arizona's outdoor amphitheater at Cliff Castle Casino Hotel. In this outdoor concert pavilion, the stars shine on stage and above you. The entertainment choices continue inside as well with live music in the Dragonfly Lounge. For information on upcoming events and tickets to the Stargazer Pavilion, visit their website at cliffcastlecasinohotel.com. Cliff Castle Casino Hotel, the Sedona Verde Valley entertainment destination. Meet the team at Arizona Smile Designers, offering complete comprehensive, restorative, and aesthetic dentistry. Dr. Vergara and Dr. Lord specialize in dental health, implants, and cosmetic dental procedures. Expert staff and state-of-the-art equipment bring forth the most from your smile. Dr. Ripplinger conveniently comes to Arizona Smile Designers for oral surgery and complicated procedures. Visit Arizona Smile Designers at 350 South Willard in Cottonwood. Insurance and new patients are welcome. Call 634-8610. Hello, I'm Mayor Diane Jones, and we're here with Inside Cottonwood, and we have Sergeant Garth Braxton with us and Citizen Robert Janica. And I just wanted to share a copy of my certificate, and uh, Mr. Janica also received one of these, but if you go to all your classes and do your work, you get a certificate from the police department, and you also get a patch. And so I'm very proud of my certificate, and <clears throat> we're doing a little bit of moving around at the office, and I'm going to have a different office, and this will be the first thing that I get to hang in my new office <laughs> at City good. Hall. <laughs> All right, so uh, we were just talking, Robert, about ride-alongs, and have you done a ride-along yet? I haven't done a ride-along. I'm going to be trying to schedule one as soon as I can, but I, I know other are there students that we were uh, in the class with, the academy with, that have done a couple of ride-alongs? And I know some other people have done ride-alongs, 
and it's very informative to really get firsthand seeing what our officers do every day. So I'm exactly. looking forward to my ride along. I'm looking forward to that too. I haven't done mine yet either, yeah. but it is something that if you apply for the class that you have an opportunity to do. And another thing that we didn't get to do that I would love to do is if this class can schedule it sometime is, is visit the jail and learn mm -hmm. about what happens at that, at, in that part of the process. So let's talk about, so we graduate from the class and then what? I mean, there is kind of a purpose to this that helps the police department, and it's a new program, a fairly new program, and we have some awesome volunteers already, but it's called COPS, or Citizens on Patrol. Yes. So what is the police department looking for, and how can citizens help the police department? Well, it's great that you mention it because we have a lot of different opportunities, and one of the things, as you mentioned, is the Citizen on Patrol program, and basically, it's an advanced uh, program where citizens can then apply to be a volunteer. They go through a full background check, which is a little bit more extensive than uh, for the than, class. Than the class, right? right. Uh, you go through a polygraph examination. Um, you get fingerprinted, and basically, once that's done, you get to uh, work in areas that perhaps interest you, uh, such as a citizen on patrol. Uh, they work different scenes. Uh, for crime scene security, if a uh, police officer is going to serve a search warrant and we need a house uh, to be watched uh, while the search warrant is being conducted, um, they can assist in that. They can assist in traffic control. They can assist in um, prisoner transports, uh, and sometimes those can be <laughs> pretty interesting. And as uh, I understand it, I mean, you, uh, the police officers have to drive juvenile defend or offenders over to Prescott. Correct. And so that the cops really help you, you don't have to take an officer off the street to do that. Absolutely, and they save a, a tremendous amount of time. If I had the stats, I could tell you how many uh, hours they put in, but it's well over uh, what you would expect. And uh, we're very grateful for it. Some of the other areas that uh, our cops have helped us out in are training events. Uh, we've had uh, evasive driving um, training for the officers and our volunteers got to play the uh, quote unquote bad guy and <laughs> drive really fast around the track and oh, I, I have the know police a few officers of them chase them. might have had a lot of fun with that. Huh? Right. <laughs> and uh, one of the other things they uh, assist us in doing is our hiring. Uh, they sit on oral boards and it's really beneficial for us to have a outside uh, opinion as we screen our prospective applicants because quite frankly we have a police department mindset, mm -hmm. whereas one of our cops or other volunteers may have a completely different background, you know, a business background mm -hmm. or um, uh, a different perspective, and so they really do help us in uh, evaluating personnel that we hire on our department. And then, as I understand it, you have one volunteer in the office who volunteers 40 hours a week? Uh, well, I'm trying to think of which one that might oh, be. Oh, there's more than one, okay. Yeah. We have volunteers uh, that uh, assist us in investigations, um, that assist us in records and wow. property. So, yeah, there's there's one person that I'm fairly sure of, um, I think it is. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's pretty amazing that someone would volunteer that much time. and. And as I understand it, the city of Cottonwood has, between the police department, the library, and the other departments that we have, we would have to hire 12 people to replace our volunteers. Wow. And so we, you know, volunteerism is alive and well in the community, and this program is something that really helps educate people so that they can volunteer some more if they like. And, yeah. you know, I think it, when you volunteer, it you get so much more back than you give. Mm -hmm. And it so much helps the police department and you know, to be able to help the professional um, department, I mean, and you have your volunteers in there and it's just a very good mix, I think, for the community. Absolutely. To have these folks, so. Well, we have about another minute. Would either of you like to kind of um, comment on anything to wrap up today, well, Robert? I'd just like to. Uh, <laughs> Go back to that. It also, it builds great relationships. Um, I know I've I've worked with a lot of the officers in my time in the hospital, but there's lots of officers I didn't know, um, and it, it helps when they're in the class and interacting with them. And it does. It does build relationships, 
and right. our community is about building relationships. So. Which just kind of reminded me of the Taser Taser yeah. <laughs> segment, <laughs> sure. where they actually found a volunteer to, to and we learned yeah. about how that works. And we've yes. seen that at National Night Out, I've seen it before, but sure. that's you know just one less non-lethal force of, of getting <laughs> compliance. So anyhow, um, we're gonna wrap up today, and I just wanna thank both of you for being You're here, and, and I've really enjoyed interviewing Interviewing you, and I believe in this program, and so I would encourage citizens from without within the Verde Valley to go ahead and apply for this class and and learn how you can help another citizen in your community. Thanks. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you. <laughs>